Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. This morning it's a quick card. So step by step doing this acetate stepper card. And I'm going to be using a different image out of a hunky dory little book. But as always going to introduce variations using some other materials. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. Hi, I'm here. Anyway, I think the easiest way to see how this card is structured is to take a look at it from this angle. So there are actually just three elements in the structure and they're pretty simple really. You've got some cardstock that makes up your stepper. So you come up back down to the bottom then come up a little bit higher. Don't come back all the way to the bottom and then go up to create the height of your card. And then on the back you've got a really sturdy piece of cardstock that is the whole length and width. And on the front you've got a piece of acetate. And the only other thing you need is something to cover up and decorate and embellish your card. So now I'm going to put the camera back up over in an overview and we'll take a look at the elements. I want to begin with the stepper piece. And so this finished card is a tall four and a half by six and a half. And so you're going to need a four and a half inch strip, probably about a 12 inch long piece. That's what I've got here. I'm, I'm going to trim it. You probably can get away with 11 inch. But what you want to do is score it. So you want to come across here whether you use a scoreboard or a paper trimmer. I use a paper trimmer in this case. But you want to score it at one inch and at two inches. That makes your first step. Then at four inches and five inches. That makes your second step. Then you want to come all the way up to ten and a half. And that is going to make your finished. Give everything a good crease with this fold over your stepper piece. So cardstock needs to be um, kind of medium weight. So something between 80 and maybe 100 pounds works really well. I left myself enough here to edge and I'm going to use a punch. So I've got a decorative edge on that. So I'm going to probably trim it to three quarters and then punch the edge and that's going to give me actually this piece. So it's going to come over and look like this. And that's, you know, totally optional. The other pieces you need, I talked about, was a base. So you want a really strong base. I think about uh, probably, you know, between 110, anything, anything stronger than that. You can't go too strong. What you want to do is score it two inches up from the bottom. So I've got some textured card here. And I think it looks like snow. And that's why I chose it. But don't give it a good crease. Leave it like that because that's going to kind of balance your card and position it so it's perpendicular. Of course the last thing is that piece of acetate. So I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter and that's going to be four and a half and since this is six and a half I'm going to cut off an eighth and that's only because we're going to layer it to the bottom. So we're going to stick it absolutely to the bottom of the card but then I want to give myself a little space so that I can cover this top edge. Okay, let's start working on this piece. So let me move the camera away and we're going to talk about your focus image. And in this case, like I said, I'm going to use a little book. And so it's about four by uh, six inches. But we're going to chop it up. And the way you chop it up depends on your stepper. I've come back with my focal elements pretty much all put together. So there's really two things to consider. Well first off, this um, almost six inches by actually this four and one eighth. So I actually cut off a strip to make them four inches wide. But what you want to remember is that when this displays, you're not going to see all of this section or all of this section or even all of this section because of the way the structure works, the steps work. So I cut half inch, one and one quarter inches, and then left the remaining piece pretty much as wide as it is. Which, like I said, is just a little bit short of six inches. The other thing, decorating or embellishing. Because you've got this structure like this, and you've got this, and actually you're going to have this piece of acetate. This area is very protected. So you can use your chunkier embellishments, or you can raise up elements. I just cut out the bird and matted it. So he's there. I've got some bling here. I've got some snow up on, you know, copying the snow. And then as I place these, I'm going to place them toward the top, because again, that's what's going to show. But kind of just folding and seeing what's going to show. 
and most of that is because this is one continuous image and that's why I want to structure it this way. So that's how this is going to turn out. Oh, also remember whatever your overhang is, how much is going to get covered up by that. Okay, to assemble. Really the first thing I want to do is put the back on because before whatever gets on here gets chunky and you've got the steps, it's actually easier to flatten this out and put on the back. So remember it was that heavy piece of cardstock and so you've got the score line. You know what? Go ahead and decorate it. So I added a couple die cuts, stamped another uh, bird and so what you want to do is just glue up to the score line and then we're going to attach it like so, square it up and then hold it down and let it set. So let me get the back on. I'll take a photo of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and place these elements and then we're going to add the piece of acetate. Okay, so now I've got the piece of acetate and on the wrong side, because this is, um, this does have a right and wrong side, I added two thin strips of double sided sticky. And so I want to peel the back of one off um, attached to the bottom first. I'm going to flatten this out, watch my bottom edge, and watch that it's perpendicular coming across the top. And get that down there really well. Now, I'm going to peel off the top. And we're going to attach it as far up as it goes. So, we're getting ready to really squash down so your, your steps. Your card really flat. You want to do that top edge. You know, and as I'm thinking about it, since I am going to cover that up, I probably did not need to go ahead and do that decorative edging here. Because, like I said, I'm going to cover up the top and I'm going to cover up the bottom. I've got a couple of embellishments. I'm going to focus on the holly, so I'm going to add that and a ribbon and be back with the finished piece. I've got my almost finished card. I've got one more thing to show you, but what I did want to show you is this is a standard envelope using a punch board for a six and a half by four and a half. So it does mail really flat. Of course, I always put front side in to the front of the envelope. And the last thing I wanted to show you. Well, first off, my punch broke. I wouldn't have done this. I had a lot of trouble with this top edge, but hopefully uh, you learn from my mistakes. So, yeah, this, this punch has been around probably longer than some of my viewers have been alive. So, anyway, it's for the trash bin, but it served me well. Anywho added that uh, last die cut and the ribbon and what I wanted to show you okay when it displays when it first comes out of the envelope it's not too bad you've got that little bend in the back but over time what's going to happen or what's potentially going to happen is this is going to flatten out a bit and so the last thing I want to introduce is a little M spacer and it's just like it sounds let me see if I'm still in focus I am it's about a quarter inch from peak to peak and then I just squish it to make that middle thing and that's so it lays flat and what you want to do is position it either as a W or as an M depending on how much space you have and attach it to this side and this side okay I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to leave you uh, finished pictures of this card and as I indicated we're going to go through some variations so I am going to change up materials I am going to change up the size. I'm going to change up the stepper and of course I want to do more things with acetate because if you've watched my videos acetate is one of my favorite materials to work with. Okay, photos and then I'll be back. So in this project I changed a couple things and first off you're going to notice this is a seven and a half by four and a half inch card. So I obviously had to change the steps or I'd have nothing left here for my focal. So let's talk about the structure first. So I changed to half inch steps and there is a recipe for those score lines. And it is, you have to know the height of your card, four and a half, and you have to know your step width. And so your first score line is going to be at one step width. Then the second score line is going to be another step width. And then two times for your third score line. Then add one more step width for your fourth. And then that last score line is going to be at the height of your card minus your step width. 
Don't worry if you didn't catch that because I'm going to show you the diagram of the pieces along with the measurements along the score line. So, the other thing, acetate. So, what I've done here is I've taken a stencil with some embossing paste. Actually, it dries very, really quickly and it's a really pretty effect on top of my card. And then, the last element I used was Deco Large from Hunky Dory. So it's another Christmas card, it's Deco Large. And this is a great way, this is like a third card for a Deco Large collection. So it usually gets the backdrop, and then you get, you know, six to eight layers of decoupage. So I know this is going to be a second card. Well, this is going to be my first card, this is going to be a second card. And so I took a couple, just a couple of elements out of here to create the stacked image. Because if you're going to stack, this is a great structure to stack in. And just on the back, um, I did some foiling and added a die cut, or a piece of a die cut. This is just a note, and I just took the uh, notes out of here. Anyway, really great second card. I'm going to leave Hunky Dory now. I'm going to leave Christmas, and we're going to move on to number three. In this next set of cards, I switch to when I think stacking. I think uh, 3D Paper Twelve, and this comes from Paper Wishes. Usually, get three stacks per sheet. And so, the first thing I want you to notice. Well, first off, kind of like I alluded to in the OSW, um, if you've got pattern paper with coordinating die cuts, these are freebie download. Of course, they come with dazzles. In this case, they come with stamps, which is going to help with my acetate. But what I want you to notice first off is that this image is more rectangular and this one's square. So for this one, I still use the one inch steps. And so I've got my square focal space. If you just change up that step width a little bit, you really have an impact on the shape of, or your focal area. So this is very rectangular and that's what I used here. This is the one inch step. This is a three quarter inch step. Also, the amount of car stock you use varies a lot. I'm not going to talk about actually cutting this out. I've got a left brain version and a right brain version. But over here what I've done is heat acetate. So I use those stamps and some early espresso embossing powder and some heat resistant acetate. And then did a little stamping. Of course going to color it in. I use Sharpie markers to do that because they uh, dry on acetate and just a little embellishing. So I've got that, I've got my papers, and just some silver linen to kind of finish off that look. Let's flip it over. So I've got my freebie die cuts, some pieces from the outside, and this is a piece of ombre adorable scorable. Flipping this over, kind of the same deal. So the other piece of adorable scorable, and then freebie toppers, and you can write whatever you want in here. Of course, always going to do my envelopes, so I got those. Now let me quickly go through the steps. Of course I'm going to leave you uh, the same sort of line with the score measurements on it, but there are two easier ways to do it depending on whether you're more math mathematically inclined like I am or you don't like fractions at all. Alrighty then, I had to come back and show you this because maybe that whole recipe thing kind of freaked out some of you people that don't like math. You actually don't need math at all if you use a paper trimmer instead of a scoreboard. I have to leave you those numbers because that's the easiest way to draw out what I'm talking about. But what I want to do now is a three quarter inch stepper. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, three quarters minus one and a half, don't worry about it. Because this is the way you approach it. You go from score line to score line. So I want to set that first score at three quarter inches. So from the edge of my paper, I go here. Now, I have a second score. Again, one step. So I'm setting my score line at three quarter inches. Okay, now I have to go two steps. So I'm using this score line. Three quarters and another three quarters. So it doesn't really matter where this is. Now, my next step is three quarter inches. So I'm going to put another one. And then the last step is the height of my card. So in this case, I'm going all the way to six and a half. So I need to set my score line up at six and a half. And then minus three quarters. 
So I know one, two, three quarters. So I'm going to set my score line this way. And that's going to give him my last score line. So anyway, just wanted to share that because like I said, I mean, some people don't like adding fractions or even figuring out one fraction from another. And this way you can do some really strange steps. You can go three eighths, you know, some oddball stuff. But three quarters kind of got a little messy when I started showing fractions. Okay, anyway, now we're going to look at this card. In these last two pieces, just other kind of things I've got laying around. So this was all actually digitally, all the papers in the topper image is all digitally created. So I just copied a freebie sheet from my Create and Craft download and just used some ovals and stacked those. Now on this piece of acetate, I think it's totally underutilized, you dry emboss acetate. And I think this piece of acetate, it's not the most flimsy, but it doesn't have to be, you know, heat resistant or anything like that. And if you look, it's a very subtle little look. So I used an embossing folder to put kind of like these two flower sprays on either corner. So did that, just a couple die cuts. And then on the back, used my inside of my oval, gutted that, and so I've got that piece. And this is actually a half inch stepper. So... Again, kind of giving myself more room for that focal. And also, I wanted to kind of illustrate, you can do different things with your top now. So the top actually extended about three and a half inches. So I just used one of my oval die cuts to cut that out. So, like I said, just really pretty and they display really nicely. And of course, lastly, if you've got little books and toppers, you're always looking for neat ways to display it. So if it works for a little book, It'll work for, they call this a popper pad. So this is actually artwork from Pollyanna Pickering. And so I took just one sheet. Again, just kind of chopped up the one little decoupage sheet. Let me find it. So I don't use eight of them. And there are eight of them. And the reason I use Little Book so much is because, you're, like I said, you're always looking for ways. I love this because it comes with actually little sentiment tags. So here I added a little more dimension on this step also because remember that it's protected and then just put some corners on there. And this came with some digital artwork as well and so that's what I used for the back of this card. And this is a four and a quarter by five and a half. This one is a four by, mm, looks like six and a half. No, four by six. So anyway, and that's what I've got to show you. So plenty to share and it really doesn't matter what materials you have like I said this is just a real statement piece really unique very intriguing and play with your acetate anyway I thank you for watching